So some students ask me about the date of the test. So next week is the week eight, so it's the midterm week. So just on Thursday we'll do a review. Next week on Tuesday, on the two-hour class, we'll have a test. So to study for the test, can look back at the uh, readings, look back at the PowerPoint files, look back at the videos. So the test will be just some short question and multiple choice. And also there will be some calculation. So we didn't do many calculations, but the calculations that we did in the class you should be able to do. Okay. So do you have any question about the test? Last time we were doing some calculation, we calculated for the European terms, the forward rate, we were calculating the forward rate, we're using this equation, okay? So for the test, if you need an equation, you don't need to learn off the equation. For example, in the test, I will give you this equation, not the European terms and the American terms equation, okay? Then. You can use an English to Korean dictionary in the test and the calculator, right? But you can't use your phone. So this is the formula for calculating American terms. So formula in American terms equals the spot rate in American terms multiplied by 1 plus the interest rate in the US over 1 plus the interest rates in the foreign currency. So what is the key difference here? The interest, they're changed around, right? Here, the interest rate in the foreign currency is on the top line. Okay, this is American, European terms. Foreign currency is on the top line. Interest rate, then American terms. U.S. interest rate is on the top line, foreign currency is on the bottom line. So, try this calculation. So this time in American terms, the U.S. dollar is on the right. equation, right? This is what we want to find, so we know this information, we know this information, and we know this information. So we put these three pieces of information into the, the spot exchange rate, the interest rate, and the interest rate into the equation, and we should find the forward rate. So these are our three pieces of information, okay? So here is the formula. So not that complicated, just insert the data in the right place. What goes here? What number goes here? This number, this number, or this number? There's three numbers. The first one, right? What number goes here? Six percent. I'm oh, sorry, four percent. The US interest rate, right? What number goes here? Right, so just put the numbers into the equation and calculate the answer. Is that very difficult? <clears throat> I 
know you have the answer if you printed out the PPT, but it's good practice to do the calculation without looking at the answer. Can you write on the board? Tell us how to do this question. Can we use this marker? Can you leave your book there? So what what do we put in the blank? here, that's correct, then we just do the, use the calculator, that's 1.98 multiplied by 0.9811, 1.9426, did you get the correct answer? Yes. yes. So how about if it's more than one year or less than one year, what do you think happens? What do we need to do? If I say six months, what do we need to change? What? What do you think? If it's six months, what would we need to change in this if it's for six months? What divide what into two? The answer? Divide one point nine nine four by two. What do I divide by two? The number one. The number one? Make this into zero point five. No? What then? 
What, do, what are we using to calculate? We have the spot rate, the two interest rates, right? This interest rate is a one-year interest rate. This is one-year interest rate. Hmm? So what do I divide by two? Interest rate, right? So we divide the interest rate by two. So that's just 0 0.02, and that's 0 0.03. Okay. So let's try an example like that. So here we can see it's one plus the foreign European terms here. The foreign interest rate multiplied by 180 over 360 is multiplied by 0 0.5, half. So try this calculation without looking at the answer, right? So these are interest rates expressed on an annual basis. This is the yearly interest rate. This is the yearly interest rate. Okay. So what is the answer? This is the spot rate and the annual interest rate. You can see there's low interest rates here. Be careful, it's a 0.1%, not 1%. Okay. Okay, so Moon Ju Wan. Just write the correct equation on the board. We start with the spot rate first. What's the spot rate? Thank you. 
We do this calculation, we get the 82 multiplied by 0.9997 equals 81.97. Then what about if it's more than one year? In this case we do to the power of the time. Do you understand this? So squared. Okay. So for example it's five years. So try this calculation. For five years using this equation. Perhaps on your phone, your your phone may not have the, the option to the power of five. Usually, so we need to have a calculator which allows us to do that, right? Usually, so. Here, this kind of symbol, right? X to the power of y. So 5, x to the power of y times 5 equals 3, 1, 2, 5. Okay? Do you have that function on your phone calculator? Don't, doesn't have that function? You need a scientific calculator? <laughs> okay, so this time we just uh, the same. Just this time we use the power of five, like I showed you on the calculator, right? So one point zero one seven to the power of five. That would be the answer. So if we do that on the scientific calculator, we can see one point zero one oh seven, right? Then x y five equals 1.54625, right? 1.5466. Okay, you can you don't have to go with all of these decimal points. Okay, you can just round up the decimal point. Okay. Usually just three decimal points is enough or four decimal points. Okay? So this is the five year rate. So do you have any question about calculating the forward rate? So then let's move on to talk about parity models and foreign exchange rates. So we talked about parity. Does anybody play golf? No. Do you follow golf? No. Did you know the President's Cup was on uh, in Italy? Yes. yes. Did anybody watch the President's Cup? No. Nobody? Don't care? Do you know a guy called Bay who plays golf for Korea? Mr. Bay? He was playing in the President's Cup. Anyway, a par in golf is if, he, if the hole is par 4, you get a 4, that's called par. Okay? Par means the same or equal. 
So we're talking about parity model. Parity is means the state of equilibrium. Okay? Foreign exchange parity models estimate what the equilibrium spot exchange rate should be. So we're asking, is today's spot rate appropriate? So if we look at the Chinese currency and the American currency, we can ask, is that the correct spot rate or not? Right? What do you think? Correct spot rate or not? Korean currency and Japanese currency, correct spot rate or not correct spot rate? Okay, so we can ask those kind of questions. We can say what? We can try to forecast the future spot rate using the parity model. Okay, usually this is used in the long term to forecast. We said in the sh what's the main thing which affects the exchange rate in the short term? Speculators. Speculators in the medium term. Five or six different economic fundamentals, right? In the long term, inflation, PPP, right? Purchasing power parity and inflation. So, parity models, we can test the correctness of a spot rate. We look at it in a case study later. A company, US company, has to decide whether the spot rate is correct or not. Okay? German company, Lufthansa, has to decide is the spot rate correct or not. Okay? Is the currency overvalued or undervalued? That's what we're talking about when we ask, is the spot rate correct? Do you understand undervalued currency? Yes. If I go to a country where the currency is undervalued, is it cheap or expensive? If I go to a currency, country where the currency is overvalued, is it cheap or expensive? Expensive. Is an overvalued currency good for exports or bad for exports? Bad for is an undervalued currency good for exports or bad for exports? Okay, so we have to get used to the idea. Overvalued or undervalued? Is the Chinese currency overvalued or undervalued? Is the Norwegian currency overvalued or undervalued? Which, where would, a, where would a haircut be more expensive? In Norway or in China? Norway. Where would a bar of chocolate be more expensive, Norway or China? China. So which currency is overvalued? Norway. Which one is undervalued? China. So we might use, we wouldn't use the Chinese one for trading, because it's a managed flow, we don't use that for trading. But we could use the Norwegian currency against the US dollar. We could say the Norwegian dollar currency, krona, is overvalued against the dollar. So what strategy are we going to use then for our trading? If I think the Norwegian currency is overvalued, what might happen in the long term? Get weaker or get stronger? Hmm? It's already strong. 